first of all, if you're not actually a speaker, could you please mute yourself? Uh, and then when I call you in to speak, you can mute yourself and then mute yourself again afterwards. So shall we start with Silvana, who said she only wants to speak for five minutes, but you can go on for a bit longer if you want, Silvana. Okay, do you want to start? Okay, um, I just want to say thank you very much for everybody to be here and listen uh, my point of view and what happened uh, through the election. Uh, we had a lot of doubts that um, we, I mean, we, we knew that we, we were winning, but, but we also knew that uh, Bolsonaro, he tried every way possible to destroy democracy in Brazil. So he gave like money, benefits to the truck drivers, tax drivers, the um, he paid for the family. Um, he also gave money to the MPs in the parliament that he, they could use the money the way they wanted. The, the, he got the, the how much money he gave to each uh, MP, but the public. We don't know because everything that he had done in his government, he put a hundred a hundred years um, block that people cannot see what is in that paperwork. So we don't know what happened in his government. So everything is like because he had the military in his side, we could not take him uh, off the power. So each time he would say that he would uh, do a coup. So we were always concerned about uh, our, uh, the integrity of the election. In the first, the first round, he managed to to win, but he didn't win enough. I think we were um, forty a forty nine something, and he was forty five something. And with that, we couldn't win. We had to have 50% plus one vote, and we didn't have that. So he managed to go to the second round, and he, he made some – do you know why he didn't win? Because he made a lot of mistakes. First, he went to a house where there were uh, uh, young girls that were like between 13 and 15 years old, and he went there and he said, ooh, that was like a, a, a climate of, you know, they were like looking at him like a man, but they were looking at him as a president. They were like girls, um, uh, poor, uh, in a poor neighborhood that they got together to learn a profession. And he went to the house and said this in a, in a, in a radio. And this became like a big scandal. That was the first, I mean, now I'm talking about the election now because the scandals is endless. It didn't start now, but we are just saying what happened during the election. So the second scandal, there was this guy, he, he was very uh, connected to Bolsonaro. He started uh, saying things to the Supreme Court and also, he's a, uh, he was uh, the president of a T uh, TSE, um, Tribunal Superior Electoral. Is the, we have a Supreme Court for the election. So let's say they organize the election, they organize electronic, because everything Brazil is doing is done electronic. Why? Because in the past, they used to buy vote. They used to go to the people's home and say, threaten them, um, want to see who people voted and the farms. So there was no integrity in election. So by doing electronically, nobody knows who you're voting. So they cannot threat the workers. But this year they did that. They threatened the workers by going back to the to this person, Jefferson, he was very close to the president. He was, he, he said something to the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court said, okay, I want the police, go there and pick him up. 
when the police went there, they were bo Bolsonarista. Bolsonaro side, the police was there to pick him up and take him to jail. And he threw a bomb on him. I mean, <laughs> he threw a bomb on the police. It looked like a cartoon. What is this? And he pointed the ruffles because the, during four years, Bolsonaro sell, uh, released. People could buy pistols, uh, ruffles, anything, plus the, the bullets. We never had this in Brazil. And now we have all these good people have all these guns. They can um, uh, point the gun at you. They can kill you, you know. And the workers cannot buy those guns. They don't have money. Anyway, going back to this guy, in the end, he went to jail. But it, this didn't look good for the Bolsonaro. So it, this was, so instead of getting more votes, more support, he started getting, start losing the support. So Lula already had like, um, I don't know how many millions of votes ahead of him. So he couldn't reach Lula. Even he had done all these uh, benefits to the people. So he started losing uh, points. So the day before the election, this MP, this uh, Bolsonarista they call, she had a, she had a bigger argument to one of uh, Lula's support, saying, you know, she was going to lose and called her son of a gun, you know. And then uh, she got mad on him. She had a gun on her. So she started running behind him. He was black and big. And there was like a, a race issue also, because if he was a white person, probably she would not run, you know, like uh, a slave. You know, people compare this like in the end of when we had slaves in Brazil. I mean... So he, she started running, and she had, like, people to protect her. So they started shooting in the air. So she got to get him on a, on a, on a small place with a gun. And she was, she had this, she, she has this uh, in Brazil. When you are in P, no, you cannot go to jail. You need to be processed. But uh, there was a specific law for that day. Nobody would uh, be able to carry the gun. But she said, you know, I, I, we are the ones who make the laws. Who is he to make the laws? So we are not going to listen to him. So this was the third, you know, uh, uh, event that happened. And Bolsonaro started losing points. So at the day of the, uh, at the election day, he told uh, his supporter one or two go in each uh, room or the, where the, the election was going to happen to go there and to observe. Stay there because he want people. Yes, he got the right to, to do that. But, you know, we need to trust the, the presidents. We need to... to uh, to trust the people who are doing their, their work, not try to intimidate the, the voters, because that's what you do when you, you know, are on top of people. So I was one of the delegates that I went there to observe the election. When I got there, I saw these people there observing, giving donuts, coffee, I said, what is this? I want to talk to someone that come, can come in here and stop this. So the, uh, the, um, because they have the, tribu uh, the TSE, the, the tribunal or the, um, the Supreme Court of Election, they had some uh, uh, members there to tell what it could be done or not. So I talked to them. They said, you know, they can stay here, but they cannot, you know, influence any way possible but and then the donor to the coffee disappeared but by then they were there for a long time oh my friend uh, uh julie is gonna get in let me tell her that she can come so that somebody else joining silvana oh julia uh, got in 
Thank you, Julia. So this the day. So people, they were that, you know. So the what happened that then also the police, because we have many types of police, and the police that guards the 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 roads, they start stopping people and you know saying, Oh, your license, your tire is flat, or you eat the bus oh where's your paperwork trying to delay people to go there to vote we could have had got more votes than we did so the the election we were like okay we need to win this but because he had put all this police there stopping the the voters to go to vote became very hard for lula to win so like in the end 50 percent uh he's he, he had like 45%, 48% Bolsonaro. He was winning. He was winning because we, on uh, Southeast, we have more uh, Lulas, more Lulas votes, voters, because they are poor. They depend on the government to, to help them, to, to go to university, to, to the moms, to be a good mom, stay home and take care of the children, take them to get vaccination, you know, all the support that the, the mom and the family needs in order to come out of, of the poverty. So when... Oh, so well, you've been speaking for 10 minutes now. Okay, that's it. So we won in the end. That was not it. Got it. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Right, so okay, well, we'll come back to you later. We're going to move now to Fabio. I can find him. Now, Fabio Bosco... Uh, how to introduce you properly. So you're a Brazilian leader of the People's Federation, Conlutus, and the United Socialist Workers' Party. I hope that's correct. That's the information I've got in front of you. How, how long would you like to speak for? Uh, thank you, Pan, for the, for the invitation well, to come here. Okay, shall uh, I give you about, yes, can yes. Just, just before you start, say, shall we say 10 minutes and then we'll come back yes. to you later? Is that enough time? That's good. Okay, That's okay. go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, look, um, our sister Silvana has already described some of the scary tactics of, of Bolsonaro groups. And it's, uh, um, you see, when you're leaving them, you, you, can, you can see that they are very, uh, they, they become a big challenge for the working class in Brazil. And uh, it's true that the defeat in the elections was very important, but it did not finish with these uh, Bolsonarist groups, you see. Bolsonaro managed to do a long four years to bring around him different sectors of society. He built a basis around him, around far-right politics. So he bring together um, ultra-conservative Christians, uh, people inside the military and the police forces, the militias uh, of Rio de Janeiro, uh, all of these around him, you see. And today we can say that something around one out of uh, uh, three Brazilians support him. Of course, this support is not, does not mean that all these people believe that it's necessary, a, a military dictatorship in Brazil, you see. Uh, but for different reasons, they are around, around him at this moment. And it becomes something very challenging for the working class, uh, because now we, we have to, to organize ourselves independently and to carry out self-defense against these groups. Um, I don't see in the institutions, Brazilian institutions, uh, as well as I don't see in any willingness by the Workers' Party, by Lula, to crush Bolsonarism, you see? Um, what I mean with this, Bolsonaro has carried out a lot of crimes against the people, about a, a long list of wrongdoings, and he should pay for them. But it seems that for the bourgeoisie, it's interesting to keep Bolsonaro as a, another card in, in if, for instance, if Brazil becomes something like Chile became 
uh, three years ago, there is a kind of uprising that go out of the control of the government. For the bushes, it's useful to have ultra-right groups organized to, to jump into action against the working class. But today, for the main capitalist groups, both Brazilians and imperialist ones, uh, they, don't, they don't want Bolsonaro to be now in power, so they are not supporting any kind of coup d'etat. Uh, it was interesting to see that just after uh, Lula was announced the victor, uh, 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 was uh, the winner in the elections, the, um, the US government sent a message uh, saying, uh, congratulating him and saying that we have a lot of, uh, of things to do together. And also European imperialist governments did the same. So at this moment, at this moment, um, uh, the, 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 the capitalists, they prefer a government like this to try to prevent any kind of upsurge that might bring any kind of problems for their business in Brazil. Uh, but this may change. So I see that it will be up to the working class to fight back these Bolsonaro groups. And in a, in a certain way, uh, some things very interesting happened just after the election. Um, I, I think you followed that just after the election, uh, some Bolsonaro groups started to block roads in Brazil uh, because they did not want to accept the result of the election. Uh, so they blocked something like 500 points in federal highways all around Brazil. Um, and what happened? In some cases, the, um, there is one very interesting uh, case where the, the workers were going to work and the, the, the Bolsonaro people were blocking the, the highway and the workers came out from the buses and put out the, these Bolsonaro people from the road. You see? The same thing happened in a poor community in Espírito Santo as well. And uh, the, the funniest thing was that just prior to the to uh, many uh, matches, football matches here, the, the Bolsonaro people were blocking the road and so the, the funds, football funds that were going to the other city to, to attend, the, the, to go to the stadium to see their football teams, they take these Bolsonaro people out, out of the road. Um, it was very interesting. So uh, some of the most popular teams in Brazil, like Corinthians or Atlético Mineiro, the, the fans did the job, you see? So I feel that instinctively, the working class, they, they understand that the, these Bolsonaro groups, they, they can play a, a, a very negative role against them. And so uh, one thing that the working class will need to, to, to discuss is how to organize a self-defense against these groups. On the other side, there is another challenge that I, I think it's important to, for us to talk about, which is the, um, Lula is preparing a kind of national unity government, you see? So the, uh, sectors of the bourgeoisie are joining the government with him. And uh, probably he will try to do more or less the same he did when he was elected in 2002. So it's a, it's a politics that, uh, as, as he used to say, he wants to rule for all. It means the businessman and the working class, you see? Uh, but in the end, we know that uh, when you, you commit yourself to this kind of politics, in reality, you are signing with, mainly with the capitalists. And in the end, you deliver some uh, liberal policies against which the working class must stand up and fight back. Uh, so, um, um, to give examples, uh, Lula, in his first term, one of his first decisions was to carry out a, a reform in social security in such a way to, to um, decrease the, the, the rights of the public workers. Um, 
Some other decisions that were very problematic as well was, uh, was uh, a law on drugs that was uh, uh, inspired by the, the politics of the US of the war on drugs. And these politics multiplied the poor people that were incarcerated, something like 200% uh, uh, increase in the number of people that are incarcerated. And, and the majority of them are poor black young people, you see. Uh, other politics that were problematic is that he did not take a clear stand in favor of the legalization of abortion in Brazil. Uh, so in Latin America, there is a very interesting development at many countries through the struggle, they are managing to, to achieve the legalization of abortion like Argentina, Chile, and Colombia. Uh, but Brazil, we are behind. We are behind. And the alliance, when you make a government that you include uh, Christian conservatives, it, it makes a kind of uh, uh, hindrance for the government to take a stand and work for the legalization of abortion. Um, so uh, what I, I feel is that for the working class, there are two clear challenges that will make our life here difficult. <laughs> uh, one challenge is to fight back the, the, the far right groups. You see, they are not going away. They are not withering away. They will stay and they are organized. They are funded by, by bourgeois organizations and they will attack the working class and the poor people. And the other challenge is to fight back the liberal policies that will come from this, this administration that Lula is preparing together with sections of the, the capitalists. And to, care, to, to, to face these challenges, we need international solidarity. See, that's why I'm here. We need you. <laughs> you we need you uh, because I, I feel that through the self-organization of the working class here, with the support across the world, we can uh, overcome all these challenges and work to build a, a, a different Brazil. You see, a socialist Brazil, a, a, a Brazil where the working class will have the power and we'll benefit from all the work that the working class themselves do, you see. So uh, I stop here and then I will listen to your questions, criticism, and maybe in the end, uh, you give me some time to, to talk a bit more. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Fabio. We certainly will. I'm going to throw the, I was going to say, of course, the whole point of having these meetings is for international solidarity so that we can all stand together and share ideas. There won't be any problem of you, you know, with supporting, supporting your, your struggles in Brazil. Um, so thank you for that, Fabio. What I'll do now, we'll throw the meeting over to the discussion. Uh, if you could use your electronic hand, because it's quite hard to spot for me to spot you if you don't put your electric electronic hand up, if you just wave at me, because I can't see everybody at once. So if you could just use that hand if you want to ask a question or or make a contribution. Um, so uh, I see that uh, John, John, and John or Dominic have got their hands up. Would you like to kick off? John. Yes, uh, John Byrne. I think um, the last speaker summed up a lot of my concerns about Brazil. The position, as far as I see it in Brazil, is not a clear-cut victory for the Workers' Party. After the election, it was in the news that the Lula's party, the Workers' Party, was actually in coalition with pro-capitalist parties and one of them, pro-capitalist parties, refused to wear the red of Lula and actually wore the white of their own party. The other thing that I think needs emphasising and was emphasised by the last speaker was the fact that the Bolsonaro opposition is well organised and the thing that disturbed me really was the venom and the hatred that came out from people being interviewed on the television. There seems to be a mixture of radical uh, evangelical Christians and bikers 
who seem to be hell bent on a fight with the Lula administration. And for a grouping that is supposedly Christian, perhaps I'm a bit naive here, they seem to be absolutely filled with hatred and venom and will do all in their power to destroy Lula and to destroy all that he stands or is seen to stand for. I mean, that, that, that to me, you know, should be a real wake-up call for the international working class, that you're not dealing with somebody in the form of Bolsonaro who's going to accept the election, accept democracy. In fact, Bolsonaro's supporters were outside the military headquarters in, I think, Brasilia, demanding, if you like, a coup from the military, from the army. And that just about sums up the sort of people that you're dealing with here. They're not some Democrats who have accepted an election. They remind me very much of the very worst elements that support Donald Trump in America. And we will see after this Tuesday what the score is with regards to America. I mean, Biden might say, yes, he supports Lula and supports what he seemingly stands for. But anyway, I'll leave it at that, comrades. I should have said Trump, doesn't it? <laughs> OK, thanks, John. Now, Richard's hands up, but I've had an indication that Julia wants to come in. Do you want to come in at the moment, Julia? Or do you want to come in later? Obviously, please, if, you, if you're from Brazil, do come into the discussion. You want to come in now, Julia? Hi, uh, yeah, my name is Julia. Okay. Uh, the thing is, I haven't, I, I've just come in, so I, don't actually, I haven't actually heard what people said. So I, I don't know where to come from in that, in that sort of sense. But I'm uh, the coordinator of the PT Labour Party, uh, Labour Party the, the Workers' Party in London. And uh, I, I would like to, to put forward a, a few things from my point of view, but I'm a bit worried about either repeating what people have already said. Well, don't, well, don't worry about that. Either that or just if you just wait a little while, wait for a few more contributions. Well, you might what, would you, what would you like? What would I, you well, well, I don't mind. You know, if you can spend five minutes just saying what you want to say and then uh, don't worry too much about repeating things. Well, the, the, the first thing I'd like to say is that we come on to, into these elections. They're not a pro-party uh, elections. They are a rejection elections um, in the sense that quite a lot of people, but of course, Lula had a, a, a good amount of support, which was already there. And Bolsonaro had a, quite, quite a, a, a lot of support as well. I reckon that... Probably Bolsonaro has as a base something reaching 25, maybe 30 percent of people. And Lula increases support dramatically, even throughout the whole of the corruption, the so-called corruption period when, when the Workers' Party was at its worst. I think we never got less than 12 percent of support in the population, i.e. we had a base over there that's always resisted everything that went on. Having said that, the most striking thing about these elections for me is that it was an election about rejection and not an election about what people wanted in the sense that the, one of the reasons that Lula could not grow any more than he did is because his rejection rates were very high. The same thing with Bolsonaro. Having said that, it is also the case that Bolsonaro practiced a number of illegalities as well. He very much used the governmental machine. He used billions of pounds in trying to prop up benefits, which he hadn't given to the population for the last four years, including during the, the middle of the pandemic when most people needed it, so that he could ensure that he could get the, the, the support of people. He had the machine of the evangelical churches in his hands, in the sense that uh, church propaganda spent a lot of time saying that the election, Lula was the Antichrist and there was going to be 
electing Lula was electing the Antichrist, basically. And he also had um, the, the, yeah, basically those two things were, were two of the, the main reasons why um, Bolsonaro managed in the last um, moments of the election to prop up his support and decrease the difference between um, Bolsonaro and Lula, as well as a number of other things that we know about, like fake news, you know, and stuff like that. So I believe that in one hand, this is quite a good thing in a way, because it means that Lula actually has greater support amongst the population than people think he has, if you just look at the numbers. I believe that a number of people that um, voted for Bolsonaro uh, are actually going to be either surprised by anything the Lula does, because basically, however bad the Lula government is going to be, it's going to be a better government than, than a Bolsonaro government. And there will be people who felt they were forced to vote for Bolsonaro. I forgot to mention the militia as well. The militia had a hand in that and, and the blocking of the roads by the, the federal highway police which made sure that a number of people didn't go to vote. So I actually reckon that within the population, Lula has, the, the a Lula government would have a lot more support than we expected him from just looking at just clear numbers during the elections. On the other hand, we have a very strong uh, capitalist elite who had to go towards Lula in the very last moment because they knew that what they did last time in 2018 was basically a destruction of Brazil. Whereas, that, whereas in 2018, they thought that they were able to tame what they thought was a stupid Bolsonaro. This time they knew that if they let Bolsonaro in power, it was going to basically destroy Brazil. So during the last month where we had between the, the first and the second round, we had a number of uh, financiers, uh, people who have never been with Lula suddenly going towards him because they were so scared of Bolsonaro. Now, two, there are two things to be said about this. One is very clear is that they are going to try to influence whatever government Bolsonaro, um, Lula is going to form. Already yesterday, uh, it was announced that a couple of um, people who were very influential in the Ministry of, fin of um, Finances for the Fernando Henrique Cardoso government may be joining the transition period for the, for the next Lula government. And on the other hand, it's also the case that these people never had any popular support within the population. Uh, so that is something that we have to be very clear and it's something that we have to pressure and make sure that, the, 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 that we know this. Because what the elite in Brazil are going to try and do and say is, oh, well, this Lula has had hardly any support in the polls. Therefore, you need to be using these people. We need to be moving in to make sure that things are as we are, because we know that most of the population in Brazil are not interested in a more socialist or left-wing government. So this is something to be said. The other thing which is worth pointing out as well is the importance of the Congress. I don't know if that's been mentioned at all, but the the uh, Congress elections are very different from the presidential elections. So although Lula did win with a majority of sorts, these, let's say, socialist uh, coalition of parties, let's say, is very small. It's no more than, say, one-fifth of, of the total Congress altogether, which means and has always meant that uh, for the left to do anything, they have to make alliances with the center and the, and the center left and up to the right. What we have that is very different this time than we had other, in other times is the fact that we now have a proper 
extreme right wing group of um, Congress people. So therefore, as well as that center, which is already showing a movement towards Lula and towards wanting to work with Lula, which may be a good thing or a bad thing, we also have a much harder uh, right to deal with, which is going to be quite problematic. Another important thing, perhaps positive to say about what's going on, is the need to address issues relating to the environment and I think Lula's already made a move towards that and the world knows that they need uh, Brazil to be at the forefront of that fight so that is a way in which Lula will be able uh, to move his policies towards something different and towards maybe blocking um, a much harder uh, right-wing move, especially in relation to uh, the economy in, in Brazil. Those are the things I'd like to say for now. That's great. Thanks very much, Jean. That's really important information. Um, we'll return to the, the uh, contributions. I've got quite a few hands up. So I'm going to ask everybody if you can do your best to keep your comments to about five minutes, please. That gives us time to come back and uh, you know return to the speakers and ask questions. And of course, we need time at the end for them to uh, to sum up. So we have, can we have Richard first, please? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Good day. Um, right. I mean, just based on what I've heard, and thank you very much to all of the speakers, from what Fabio uh, uh, said um, in particular, um, um, and also from what the uh, comrade from the PT in London said, it sounds pretty clear that uh, this Lula government is not going to be entirely different from the last uh, uh, Lula governments in that it's going, to, uh, it's going to reflect the aspirations at one level of millions of workers that voted for it and it's going to let those, those workers down uh, because uh, it's not going to you know, fundamentally and irrevocably break from the, uh, the the capitalists and the financiers, um, and um, and uh, and uh, uh, and what Savannah just said about the uh, financiers being potentially invited into the government is emblematic of that and a sign of where things are going. Uh, it seems to me that the the the, the, the Brazilian uh, uh, Marxist left have a real challenge um, on their hands, therefore, because the situation is such that you've got on the one hand. Uh, 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 the, uh, 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 a series of, uh, of guarantees from the uh, PT uh, of instituting progressive reforms and clearly also an appetite to undertake neoliberal uh, policies as well. And therefore they need to be uh, able to organise in such a way as to demand action uh, to enforce the, uh, the progressive commitments whilst uh, demanding that they drop the, uh, the, anything negative and break from the break from the bourgeoisie. It seems to me that, the, that exactly as Fabio said, you've got this street army integrated, integrated with, with some sections of the military and the police as well, and militias, um, organised around not just Bolsonaro, but also the wild uh, extreme right ideology um, of, of, of Bolsonarism. So you know, similar in some ways to Trumpism, but with some you know, even wilder elements which menaces the working class and threatens the potential for insurrection and civil war if, uh, if Lula were to go too far. So a huge opportunity, as well as necessity, it seems to me, is posed by uh, the, 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 the need for um, the, the workers to mobilise, as Fabio said, that was already happening, to break up any Bolsonarist um, uh, blockades, any Bolsonarist counter-protests, and actually to go on the offensive in order to, uh, to start to repress them and therefore to be able to build up the sort of fighting organisations alongside trade unions and alongside um, an independent working class party to start to build up your own militia. Um, you said workers can't afford, the first speaker said that the, uh, the, the, the middle class and the, and, the, and the police and the reactionaries are making use of Bolsonaro's gun laws in order to arm themselves and workers can't afford to do so, but workers organisations can uh, and uh, it seems to me should be, uh, should be making use of this moment in order to prepare for confrontation. Uh, because ultimately, it seems to me that it's in the fight to prevent a right-wing coup, in the fight to dissolve the right-wing gangs, that workers could start to develop the sort of organisation that could take the power into their own hands. 
in a social crisis. Um, and, uh, and, and it's not going to be Lula that does that. It's going to be the workers um, the, the, themselves in a social crisis in which, uh, in, in which uh, the, you know, the, 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 the threat of the, of, of the, of the right uh, liquidating the, the, the working class movement and destroying, you know, the, the results of the election uh, potentially pose a, a, you know, a real challenge to everybody. Okay, thanks very much, Richard. Uh, Martin, next, please. Oh, hi, Pam. Um, hi, Martin. I, I, I got the invitation from Fabio. Uh, I, I'm from Liverpool, <laughs> so um, thanks. Uh, and uh, I'm in the International Socialist League, so obviously aware of this discussion um, going on. I think just to add a, a another point in relation to the uh, what's been said, clearly Bolsonaro had a lot of support from various forces in the United States, uh, in the UK, and from the European Union. There's something like uh, 800 uh, multinational companies from Britain um, that, that had links. And I, I think it would be very useful to um, dig some material out in exactly what role they were playing, for example, in the Amazon and, and, and so on. And how much money were they feeding in one way or another the Bolsonaro project? Um, because I, I think that um, the, the organization that Fabio is, does uh, newsletters and things for is, is CSP Con Lutis, the uh, trade union um, federation in Brazil. Um, and they've always been very good at sending solidarity to the strikes um, in this country. Um, and obviously there's been a lot of strikes around Merseyside. So um, I, I think it would be, I think meetings like this are really in, important to raise the whole question of international solidarity with the working class in, in Brazil. Because as uh, people have already mentioned, the mobilization of another, a number of armed forces um, that uh, sort of the Bolsonaro supporters take to the streets. And then, um, I don't know what was it, the Federal Highway Police and Military Police did not only resp uh, repress the roadblocks, but they are in some cases fraternizing and even encouraging the protesters to remain. So I think there's a very important and, and deep question in Brazil that we could help with. Um, I, I'm going to put in the, the, the chat, if that's okay. A, yes. um, it, it's, it's from a sister organization in the United States, Workers' Voice, and it just says, we're asking organizations to join us in drafting a solidarity statement in building a unified online forum in response to the situation that's now taking place in, in Brazil. Um, and beyond statements and forums, we think building solidarity actions um, really uh, across the countries where we can is is very necessary. And because as we know, Trump hasn't gone away. They're, they're continuing to organize. Clearly, Trump had his links with Bolsonaro and will no doubt maintain those kind of things. So um, I, I think uh, I'll put that in and people can have a look at it. And um, perhaps we could uh, sort of participate in that as well um, when, when there's enough time to read all of this. But I, I just think it's, um, it's very important to do that sort of international solidarity. So just um, keeping it to, to that. And thanks very much, Pam. Okay, thanks very much, Martin. We'll, uh, we'll, take, we'll take notes of that, look at what you put in the chat, and perhaps return to that, because, uh, you know, you're quite right. We do need to establish uh, international workers' solidarity. So moving on, uh, Carol, do you want to go next? I mean, it's really pretty clear that capitalism in general is in the, its death throes. And even though Trotsky said that in 1938, it's, I mean, it's frightening. And I can, it's, it's clear that most of the people on the call sort of understand that both, both that, that um, Lula is not going to be able to be a patchwork, that in the past, it would have been possible to maybe stave off um, you know, fascism with some this kind of coalition, although certainly it never really worked if you look back. 
But at this point, his inviting these people into the government essentially means that he's abdicating responsibility for taking power um, out of the hands of the working class. And, and the, the sheer fact that he, when, when he was arrested, didn't call the workers out on strike against his arrest essentially means that he's going to deliver on whatever it is the right wing, wing wants. And I think ultimately this government is, isn't going to last very long because the economic crisis in Brazil is extreme. What could he do? The, the financiers support him because I, I think it's true because they know that Bolsonaro is unstable and he's going to wreak more havoc. On the other hand, socialism or, or barbarism is really at this point on the agenda. And I think that that's really the reality for, for what's going on in Brazil uh, at this point. It's, it's clear that he's not going to disband the militias. And those are the people that are going to ultimately be the fascist you know, front guards that are going to undermine any struggle that the working class is going to engage in. The other problem, um, I mean, I, and I agree with what Fabio said, there absolutely has to be defense guards to protect the working class because certainly there's no group in Brazil at this point that, it, you know, the police and the militias and all, all are on the side of, of Bolsonaro and the right wing. So workers are going to have to organize their own defense guards to protect themselves. I, I thought it was sort of interesting what Fabio said about the fact that they the, the people who wanted to go to the football games remove the, the militia. This is, this is it. This is what organically has to happen. Short of that, I think we can have an expectation that there's going to be another coup in, you know, in, in, um, in Brazil and that it's going to mean the murder of thousands and thousands of, of you know, working class militants. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was there, you can't imagine that, you know, here in the United States, people are just applauding the fact that he won. And so, and those are basically the Stalinists. And so they're going to be an impediment also, as they have traditionally been in, in demanding, you know, that there be defense guards and that the working, there be better working class organizations, because why should there be? There's Lula. Lula is a good guy. Lula is on the left. Lula came out of poverty. Lula was a worker, et cetera. And those are the people that I end up having to argue with a lot here. And, you know, just to, to end, I think that um, things are going to, to get much worse. And Lula is given his, star, his, his own history and the history of these popular fronts have never been able to stop the, the right wing from taking power. So ultimately, I think unless we tell, and, and I think there has to be absolute international solidarity, demonstrations all over the place, um, unless the working class takes power in Brazil, I think ultimately there's going to be like another coup fascist coup, American-supported coup, but in any case, it's not too long down the line because the crisis, even since the last time, has deepened in Brazil and around the world. And so we have to be prepared to tell workers that they have to take power, essentially, in Brazil, as in other countries in Latin America and, and in the United States. That's it. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, Ed, do you want to go next? Um, thank you. Um, I'm very grateful to the comrades from Brazil who, who've spoken and given us some really valuable insights into what's going on, things that you won't get, we, we wouldn't get in the ordinary press reports, particularly, you know, this this stuff like, um, you know, um, uh, the, the football crowds, uh, breaking their way through barricades and so on to get to the matches. I mean, it's it's the kind of working class experience that BBC journalists don't pick up on, and um, it, it it kind of brings bring it brings a far better focus to actually the the issues in 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 society at the moment. 
Um, so, so thanks, comrades. My, my contribution is really just a question, and it, and it flows from what most of the comrades in this discussion have, have alluded to or, or, or stated directly, that, that we, we, um, what's the mood of the advanced workers in relation to the Lula government? I'm talking about you know, work, workers who are politically thinking, who want to take action, who want to push this movement forward. What, what is happening in terms of the self-organization of the working class so that the situation we're now in can lead towards an independent movement of the working class, not complicated by the, the fact that, that, that alliances, uh, you know, Lula himself is trying to make alliances with the bourgeois, even bringing in some of the far right elements and so on, that the, the in, in contrast to that, the working class needs its own independent organization. And what I what I'm asking, because I because I don't, you know, I don't see the information in, in, in what I've looked at, is how does this process how, how do we move from here to this point where we have an independent working class party? There, there are obviously very big illusions on the part of millions of people in Lula and therefore breaking from Lula's uh, party is not a straightforward or simple thing you, you know that I can imagine there are a few sectarians who think oh it's dead simple you just set up on your own and say we're, we're, we're the boys we've got the ideas and everyone comes flocking to you but we know that the working class doesn't develop its organizations in that manner, not in this period anyway. We're, we're, we're looking for ways of developing a new movement that embodies the left and enables the, um, the complications in, in all these left and center alliances to be got round and to, to channel the independent activity of the thing, things like the initiatives in breaking down barricades, in allowing workers to go to work, th those are the elemental activities that indicate how an independent workers' organisation would move towards a genuine transformation of society from the bottom up. And th my question is, do comrades know what steps are being taken? Have comrades got any idea of the strategy that will help develop those kind of processes in Brazilian politics. Thank you. That's it. Thanks very much. I'm sure those those uh, questions will be taken up in the course of the direct uh, course of the discussion. Um, to move to David next, please. Yeah. Well, I want to open up by um, saying I'm so pleased that we've had first class reports and uh, analysis. You know, from Silvana. Uh, from Fabio and from Julia. It's, it's marvelous uh, to see you here. And also, let's put uh, this spin on, on what, what's happened. Uh, we've actually had a victory against reaction. Sure. Uh, I know that the uh, Silvana reports that uh, people are a little bit tired. I'm sure that there's been energetic uh, organization, but the mood is, is up. It's possible to defeat reaction. It's not inevitable that we have to surrender to right-wing after right-wing regime. And this is so important for our international perspectives because we see in Sweden, the right-wing is now in coming into power. Same in Italy. In uh, Hungary, we see huge uh, movements there to push uh, society to the right. And same in Czech Republic. And we've got these uh, very uh, divisive, um, and well-organized attempts in India and, and in the United States right, right here, uh, which are propelling the right wing forward, uh, almost uh, limitless uh, access to funds and doing everything they can to destroy working class organization. Now, that's one side, and we know that situation is polarized, but generally on the left, we have to be frank it's a soft lift. It's a soft situation. It's not this hardened uh, bunch of uh, hooligans and gangsters with guns in their hands who are quite prepared to go into the favelas 
and elsewhere and just shoot uh, and, and kill. Uh, not that we want to see this on the left, but we have to be prepared to fight and fight ruthlessly uh, to, you know, against this, uh, you know, the, these, uh, these groups. But it, it is possible to defeat populism. Populism is it's, it's a nice phrase. Really what it is is a form of neo-fascism internationally, which is basing itself on primitive accumulation, particularly um, evident in Brazil, where the idea of capitalism is to unleash class forces to say, go into the Amazon, grab what you can, grab the gold, uh, grab, uh, burn down the uh, timber, you know, the forest and, and harvest the timber, do what you can. And that's the kind of rugged, uh, shall we say, hardened support that Bolsonaro had, along with the histrionics of the uh, Protestant churches, particularly, uh, who've uh, poured petrol on, on fire and are fighting uh, ruthlessly to reduce women uh, in every way to deny them their rights in terms of control over their body and to be able to build a society which is misogynist in a particularly political way so that the men can rise to the top of society and rule without any uh, restraint at all. This is, the, this is the vista, you know, that the Bolsonaros and the Trumps open up uh, in, in, in our various societies. Unfettered capitalism and unfettered... Uh, a re development of ruthless capitalist classes, not always the top capitalists, it splits, it's, it'll split different parts of the capitalist class, but uh, opening up for, for those kinds who, who the last thing they have in mind is the salvation of the world in terms of uh, cutting back on climate change or anything uh, of that uh, kind. And so we have a, a, a great uh, victory in, in, in this sense. Now, what do we do with this? Well, how do we organize ourselves? And I think some of the practical points have been raised we've got to take quite seriously. Uh, in South Africa, we have daily, well, almost not quite daily, but almost every week, there's an assassination of, a, of the landless people, who are people who've set up uh, favelas in South Africa. And we see the same in, in Brazil. And there is the possibility of solidarity between MST, a, a, a development. I, we, I wouldn't always agree with all their political positions, but they are, being, they are a factor, uh, and they also are a factor in South Africa. And then between the metal workers in Brazil and in South Africa and internationally, and the dock workers, we can go through list after list of sectors where we can organize direct links and try and bolster the confidence of the working class as it face a very difficult uh, situation. But most of all, we do need that political organization, which has been pointed to in, uh, by Ed and others, uh, that we have to build working class organizations politically, which are not dependent on, on donations, which are dependent on the dollars or the $5 that the workers can provide to build up independent working class organizations. The PT, I have to say, from uh, outside view, and I raise this maybe as a question, I understand there's no workers, a newspaper, there are no media that actually are, are directed to the working class uh, and, and its uh, organizations. And so, the, you know, all of these factors, we have to build the base and the institutional structures of a, and, and rebuild the unions, particularly um, in, in this way. And, and, and let me just end on, a, a, on an optimistic note. You know, at one time, Brazil was the sixth economy of the world. It's now slipped, I think, to about the tenth. But when you talk about size of the economy, you're talking about millions of workers. Brazil apparently has the fifth largest working class, 100 million workers in the world. This is not an inconsiderable social force. With its organized organization and its political perspectives and, uh, on, the, on the right track, it will be able to drive uh, the reforms from below, drive against a reaction, and actually bring about a situation in which reaction is neutralized, but, you know, the polarization is hardened on, on the left, and the right wing is forced to retreat. And when we look towards having working class and power in Brazil in the future.
Thank you. Mm. Thanks, thanks very much for that, David. Uh, I'm actually going to bring Temos in next because he's not spoken. Then we'll go back to you, Julia, if that's OK, because I'm guessing you have a few responses to make to what's been said. Temos. Yes, uh, I would like to take up this question of, uh, uh, of uh, the, the, the capitalism's death, capitalism and its death rows and the, and, uh, the fact that uh, uh, there is no chance of, uh, the, of uh, popular France to succeed uh, and the fact that um, uh, there, there is uh, a, a sharp uh, clash among the left of what to do about supporting or not supporting uh, these uh, these movements, and I, I think we should uh, we should uh, be careful and we have to uh, uh, redefine what we mean by capitalism's death throes, Not from what Trotsky said, really, but but from what we we understand. And uh, I think that if if uh, Capitalism is in dire straits and is uh, nearing its end. Uh, and I think it is. Uh, it, it is not going to be just an automatic process. It's going to go through all sorts of, uh, of attempts to, to take power, all sorts of trials. And, and this is a process, a learning process that we have to go through. And we have seen what's happening in Brazil, with uh, Lula taking power, and with, with, with the support of the working class, with the support of all the groups, really. And now we should we should we should try to try. To, it is happening everywhere else in the world. In all all the critical situations in every country, we have seen this. We have seen uh, uh, these uh, more or less reformist uh, programs uh, succeed, and then they, 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 what happens next? Then they come up against the realities of government, and at that stage, uh, uh, we have we have to uh, to to use uh, our pressure on uh, and our attempt to continue implementing the best part of the program that these uh, these forces come to power, and that will will most probably provoke a. a, 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 a a crisis with the right wing, and they'll have to fight that. And I, while I agree that we have to to build the forces of the working class, we have to uh, organize militia if we can. We have to uh, uh, to bring out uh, uh, arguments about uh, insisting on on all the socialist aspects of of the program of the, of this government. We should be careful not to not to antagonize it in the sense that. We go against it because we have to go together with the workers, and we have to go to at, at the same pace with the, with the consciousness of the workers uh, as they understand it. And, and not only the workers of Brazil in this case, but the workers of the whole world, because Brazil cannot go it alone. No country can go it alone, even even if it is the tenth biggest economy in the world. It's it, it's just a country. And we have to continue uh, to go uh, to go in pace with what happens in the world, and and the 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 world working class will be following what's happening in Brazil, and uh, and what's happening there has to be success after success after success. Small successes are much better than uh, premature clashes that that lead to defeat. And when uh, when uh, when if, if this is managed well. I think that uh, we are really talking about a, de a developing revolution in the whole world. It could be, it could start in Brazil uh, quite easily, and could start anywhere else. But it, it should ne we should never lose uh, sight of the fact that we this has to be built patiently and 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 steadily, and we have to have a program, and we have to follow it, and we have. We have to preserve uh, the unity of the forces of, left, of the left uh, as, uh, in every way we can. Thanks very much for that, uh, Tamos. Okay, uh, if we can now return to Julie and then Fabio, please. So, Julie, do you want to go next? Hi, um, as a as a member of the the Workers Party, <laughs> the PT. 
um, you probably expect me to disagree, and I do disagree with uh, quite a lot that's been said over here. I think it's important to not underestimate Lula for a start. Uh, and not to really not to underestimate what happened in Brazil, really, because what happened in Brazil was a massive crisis. The, uh, uh, the attacks against the Workers' Party and Lula pretty much started, well, it started when Lula came into power as a, as a workers' representative, first of all, when he first um, built the Workers' Party and then the, the Cuchi the the central um confederation union confederation in brazil but mainly when brazil when um lula came into power around 2005 with the so-called cash for vote scandal was the first attack into, uh, to the workers party uh where they thought that they were going to bring down uh, uh lula then they didn't manage to but the whole idea of using corruption as a weapon uh, to bring it down uh, became very strong and was used in a very strong way. And when I talk about rejection of the Workers' Party, I'm basically talking about a, a built uh, imaginary that was made up mainly on that issue, on the issue of the Workers' Party and Lula being a corrupt party so we have to be very much aware of 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 the great amount of hostility that was and there still is in brazil um against the workers party and lula so the fact that we went from him being a, a seen as a criminal in prison to arrive and become president is a very very big Feet, as is the fact that all these people with the came and started to join Lula, and you have to you have to remember as well that it wasn't just a question of Lula asking for these people to come. These people came towards Lula because they saw no option. Their, or their option would have been a so-called third way that was never in the mind of the of the Brazilian population. So that's number one. Number two, Lula went through this whole this whole process. He saw himself from being the most popular leader to being a pariah in prison, and that experience is with him. And he is going to take this experience with him when he goes into in, into power now. So he, he may be open. He is a negotiator. He is somebody who is able, like no one else, to just swallow what happened and, and move on and make alliances. But don't underestimate his vision and, and what he thinks uh, about what is happening. Thirdly, Brazil has a number of left-wing parties. The, the Workers' Party isn't the only uh, working-class party in Brazil. Uh, it has it has parties who are that are more to the left, and they still don't have. They may have in the future, but at the moment they do not have the support of the population. And the last thing I wanted to say is the fact that the first thing that happened as soon as uh, the coup against um, Dilma Rousseff was perpetrated was uh, breaking uh, the strength of the unions. From one moment to the next, they put in laws, they forced in laws under, under a, a government that was not democratic to take away uh, both the finances of the unions and workers' rights. Most of the Brazilian uh, workers are no longer in, in, in large uh, unionized sectors where Brazil does have a very large working class population, but most of that population is not unionized, is not formalized. And this, I think, is one of the things that Lula is very much thinking about as well, is a, a new form of organization for the workers. And without that, without the reunionizing and the reorganizing of these new classes of uh, working class, I do not see how we can possibly uh, move on in in a in an organised uh, socialist 
way more than we're doing at the moment, to be honest. And the other thing that's important to mention as well is the great power that the evangelical churches have. Because the evangelical churches, with their uh, theology of prosperity that's overtaken any sort of um, left-wing uh, theo theological vision of, of the church at the beginning of the Workers' Party, when the Workers' Party started to form, is very much an individualistic view of I am here because I made myself. Even throughout the government, uh, uh, the Lula's government, where people started to feel better about how they were lived, how they were, the the vision of these people was: I got here not because of these policies, not because we are organised, not because of this and that, but because I was able to do about by myself. So I, 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 those are the things I'd like to throw on the table when we're thinking about, you know, whether Lula can do this or whether whether we can organise a, 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 a second left-wing uh, working class force that is stronger than what we have at the moment. Uh, and, and to think about the actual situation, state of affairs, that Brazil finds itself that just managed... And we're not talking four years, we're talking 10 years and 10 years of resistance. Because if it wasn't for the resistance of people like, like the, the grassroots of the Workers' Party and social movements like, like the unions and like the MST and, and, and various other organizations, we wouldn't be where we are now. Thanks very much for that, Julia. Fabio? Return to you. Anybody else wants to come in again? There's no hands up after Fabio at the moment, so please put your hand up again if you've thought of something else to say in the meantime. Fabio. Um, I'd like just to comment uh, a couple of things. First, the issue of Amazon is a critical issue, and it's true that uh, Bolsonaro put around himself the, the capitalist forces that are uh, destroying the Amazon and doing what they've called the uh, primitive accumulation, you see? Uh, loggers, miners, and agribusiness are together uh, destroying the, the rainforest and destroying the living conditions of the native Brazilians and other peoples that live in the forest, you see? The riverside population and also the I don't know the word in English, the people that collect rubber from the trees. <laughs> These people, they are also there in the Amazon <laughs> in the airport. Um, but uh, I'm also afraid that these guys that support the idea of green capitalism is also very problematic because they, they look to the forest as a, way, uh, as a means to, to keep what's profitable and what's not profitable uh, uh, are not going to be kept, are not going to be preserved. So I think that we also take a critical stand uh, regarding this, this kind of green capitalism, you see? Because the capitalist force, uh, in a way or another, they are going to put under threat the, the, all the, the nature, you see, as they have been doing for uh, more than 100 years. Uh, I really appreciate the, the, the perspectives that were brought here by Richard, Carol, Ed, David, and others. Um, Ed uh, asked a lot about the issue of the independent self-organization of the working class. I definitely believe in that. Unfortunately, today in Brazil, uh, I can tell you something like 9% of the labor movement and social movements are supportive of Lula and will support his government at least for the first month. You see, there is a, a period of honeymoon. And, um, and that's why the, the, the capitalists want the, the Lula to start his government, you see, because they believe that Lula can control. The situation in Brazil is very bad. Uh, I think you, uh, what Julia said is definitely true. There are 33 million people that don't have enough food to eat every day. 
the unemployment is going down, but the quality of the jobs that are being generated is very, very low. Uh, the minimum wage is very low. Uh, something like 60% or 70% of the working class do not have regular jobs. So the situation is dreadful. And that's why it, it may emerge uprisings, protests. Uh, it's something that is unpredictable. But the bourgeoisie is preparing themselves. And their third card is this national unity government that Lula will lead. You see, he will put capitalism inside the government. His vice president, uh, Julia can tell you, uh, Geraldo Alckmin was the governor of Sao Paulo for 10 years. This guy is a right wing. He was connected to, to the very ultra conservative section of the Catholic Church. Uh, he was declared the enemy of public education many times in Brazil because he sent the military police more than, I don't know, 10, 20 times to beat the teachers. He sent the, the he, well, I myself, when I was official in the Subway Workers Union of Sao Paulo, I was dismissed together with 41 uh, uh, brothers and sisters by Geraldo Alckmin. This, this man, he's a right wing, you see? He's right wing. And uh, he is together with, with Lula uh, because Lula believes that the only way to rule Brazil is to make this alliance with the, the capitalists, with the, 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 even the conservative force inside parliament. He will try to bring these evangelical guys that Julia was talking about. He's tried to bring these uh, groups together with him. And that's why in, in one of the debates here in Brazil, he said that he personally is, opposes abortion. You see the legalization of abortion. Uh, then we, what we have to see, um, okay, I, I agree when, um, I think Silvana raised this issue that any government is better than, than Bolsonaro. I agree with that, but Bolsonaro was very bad. 600,000 Brazilians died in the pandemic. It was terrible. Uh, but we have to see how to, to, to bring a perspective, a working class perspective, you see, uh, to bring real change. Otherwise, what will happen? Lula, okay, he start to rule. He promised to, to increase the minimum wage in 1% above inflation, 1%. And the minimum wage is very low. Uh, the, the, the working class will not be uh, uh, comfortable with this kind of things, you see. He promised to keep the, the there is an um, uh, allowance that is given to the very, very poor in Brazil that now it's 600 reais. And he, uh, Lula committed himself to keep this allowance. Okay, uh, but these, these measures are too, uh, are far uh, beyond the necessity of the working class. And that's why, Ed, I think that when we are talking about independent uh, self-organization of the working class, I think the working class will start to move. You see, maybe it takes some months, but it will move. And in their movement, they will find out who are their allies and their enemies. In their movement, both fighting back the far right groups that uh, are here to stay for the moment at least, or the, the liberal policies that we will merge, that will come out from Lula administration, I think in this movement, the working class will find, will need to independently organize themselves. Uh, that's in what we trust and that the perspective that we are putting our efforts. The Cespe con Lutas is a labor federation that uh, was born of the struggle against the, the, the reform of social securities that Lula did in 2003, you see? Uh, and uh, what we believe is that we need to keep our independence from any government and keep our, our attention in the workers' rights. And that's what we are going to do. And I think that we are going to find many allies in this, uh, under this perspective. Um, I'd like to say just one, one thing more. Uh, Lula is not committing himself to any socialist perspective, okay? Uh, because there is, uh, when people uh, talk about Lula, 
there comes in the collective minds the idea of the leader of the working class in the end of the 70s fighting back the, the military dictatorship, uh, leading strikes, uh, founding the Workers' Party in the CUT, a labor, the largest labor federation in Brazil. But this Lula is not, this, is not there anymore. The Workers' Party played a role in the independent uh, perspective for the working class during the 80s. But after the, the Berlin Wall uh, fall, it changed completely. It started to, to talk about the need to ally themselves with the bourgeois sectors and all, all this kind of stuff. And we know this kind of alliance prevents any administration from carrying out positive policy towards the working class, you see? And we have to keep in mind that the, the, the world situation today, of the, there is an economic crisis everywhere, you see? These economic crises make the margins for reforms under capitalism even smaller. So it's not probable that Lula will manage to deliver something more substantial, meaningful for the working class, you see? Unless he break away from the capitalists, then it will be possible because Brazil is a rich country. Brazil has the conditions to improve the living conditions of the people. Brazil produces a lot of food. There is no reason to have 33 million people without, without food, enough food. Uh, but this needs to break with powerful interests, you see? Corporations, multinationals, the, the, the agribusiness, they are powerful, you see? They rule Brazil. And either you break away from them or it's... I think it's impossible to deliver any meaningful uh, reform for the working class. And uh, so, just add, I agree with the perspective that you open here of the need for self-organization of the working class. And I think when this working class start to move, as David remembers, it's more than 100 million workers, you see? It's powerful. It may bring change, and we have to, be, to put our cards in this perspective. Okay, thanks, Fabio. Uh, Jimmy Kelly, you've indicated you want to ask a question. You want to come in next, please? Yeah, in, in a way, some of it has been answered by Fabio. Uh, one, of, one of the things that has shocked me over the last decade or so is meeting uh, some of the many thousands of uh, Brazilian workers who are working in Ireland and trying to stimulate discussions with them, uh, particularly the younger ones. And in more recent years, there has been a, a conscious response of enthusiasm, particularly towards the possibility of Lula being re-elected uh, and Lula in the early stages being rehabilitated. But running alongside that was a deep and sometimes violent response when I raised the question of Dilma Rousseff. Um, and it, it shocked me that the same young people that had illusions in Lula were completely rejectionist in the attitude with a very, as I say, a very violent reaction in some cases. I, I could never understand that because while no revolution in itself depends on an individual, it's more a process of class politics, class struggle. Nevertheless, the role of individuals is important and the contribution that they make and what they represent in terms of the tradition and their perspectives uh, is important. So what I would ask is a question in terms of, uh, first of all, accepting that Lula has come through a process of demonization and uh, recovery on the basis of the support of B the PT in, in particular. And also, I, I would acknowledge, that, and it was mentioned earlier, the question of re rejectionist politics, that Bolsonaro was as much rejected as he was supported. But the, the question that I'm looking ahead is, if, is it possible for the PT to have sufficient roots within the class 
and the class sufficient roots within society to develop and continue a policy and program that would see the PT or and not exclusively the CT, that the working class through political action and through trade union action of achieving power without their leaders as they had survived with their leaders in, in demon, demonized. And on a personal level, again, the, uh, I'd finish. Uh, what is the situation now regarding Dilma? Is she still demonized, fairly or unfairly? Is there any future for her? And the idea is that she had her early youth and early life represented. And it, it really, what, what, what is the future ahead for the, for the present uh, old regime of the working class leaders? I'll just leave it at that. Thanks very much, Jimmy. Uh, Sylvana, do you want to come in next? Um, first, I think uh, people need to understand who is Lula, what he is trying to do. He never was a fighter who got a gun. He's not a militia. He's not going to go and fight, take lives, humanistic. He'll try his best to talk to everyone involved. In the, in, the, in the problems. Um, they took him for granted, yes. Um, they used his ability to, to talk to, to them. He, 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 he is a Republican. He believes in democracy. He believes in the people's words. It's not his fault that he went to jail. We cannot put a victim as a, you know, the problem. They are the criminals. They got jail. They took Dilma out of power. We had the best jobs ever. We managed to lower the inflation. The salary was very good. They were raised, the minimum salary was raised above of the product, uh, the, the cross domestic product uh, was uh, raised above of the inflation. Everybody was happy. We were not best. We had the World Cup coming. We had the Olympics coming. Everybody was doing what they were supposed to do, but they were greedy. They want more money. That's what they do. They want more money. That's why they took Dilma out of power and put Lula in jail, accused him of corruption. Guess what? They never found one penny in his pocket. Never, ever, ever. Even the judge, the corrupt judge, Moro, right? He couldn't figure out what was wrong, where, where was the money, what was the action? To, to put someone in jail, we need to tell the person, what was your crime? And they never told Lula what was his crime. Even Giselle, his uh, right hand, what was a uh, model did the same like Giselle did. When he left the, the government, he went to work for the companies. He was not in the government anymore, for God's sake. Uh, Moro was he, he, not even before he left the, the, to be the ju federal judge, he was selling his opinions. Once he left the, to be a judge, he came here, United States, to work for the same people that was accusing Lula of maldoing. Lula never did anything wrong. And we, are, we have been here fighting for the last six years. I mean, more than six years. Since the Pretolon, we are here working hard to prove that the PT is innocent. We are not going to be like Bolsonaro. We are not going to kill no one. We are not going to give guns to no one. And if you guys want somebody like this, we are not going to be. And by the way, we had 
the best economy. Lula managed to put us in the top of the world. We were request every Christ that was, and he was there to help. And by the way, Lula now have a lot of an appointments to see for the environment, for the, for the environment Christ. But I guess what? Never is enough. And Lula is going to prove himself once more. He's the best president ever that Brazil had, and that's why he was elected. We, the roots, we are going to fight for him. And we are continuing. We have committees. We are fighting on uh, social medias, and we are fighting on the streets. We are not going to go down by this type of militias. We are not militias. Do you know what militias means? When you are becoming police, you, you swear that you're going to protect the people. What did they do? They go there in the favelas where the poor people are working hard. They work in the mountains, but they go down where the rich people is, and they work for almost for free. That's not fair. That's why we want, we want to go to school. We want to go to university. We want everything that we have the right. We pay taxes. They are not giving anything to us, right? Now we have black people as a doctor. We have uh, teachers. We, they go to Lula and take him. They are the first person in that family being a doctor, being a lawyer, okay? We never had that in Brazil. Lula built more than 400 universities in Brazil. How dare are you coming here and talk about Lula? You know, Lula is the best president that he have, we had ever, and he's gonna prove himself once more. And by the way, what else Lula did? Do you know after, I'm gonna talk about Moro, the judge, the corrupt, he's the corrupt. He went to support Bolsonaro, he was the, the minister of defense and told to everybody once he left the government that Bolsonaro was trying to protect the children and he was not going to be behind him. But then Moro wants to become a senator. So what did he do? He went back to Bolsonaro, got elected as senator. He's going to be in the Senate as a senator for eight years. Eight years on a, on a paycheck. But Bolsonaro is a mean person. Do not, you know, he's Hitler. He's the, the next person that wants to dominate the world. And he and Trump together can destroy a lot of lives, a lot of things. And you, you do never ever, you know, um, believe that they cannot do that. Because people, there's a lot of mean people out there, man. They don't want to kill others. I live here in the United States now. And they are the same like in, in Brazil. Anyway, Bolsonaro, he managed how smart he is. He's not stupid. He's psychopath. He managed to convince the army. The army is on his side, guys. He, they would have done anything for us. Do you know why Bolsonaro never was impeached? Because we, he, he had the arm on his side. He didn't have the government. He had the state. PT was there for more than eight years. They never had the state on his end. Never. And one day, once they decide to ask uh, Lula to stay the third um, um, government, he said, no, thank you. I think I need to step down. I'm not a dictator. But Bolsonaro, he's, he wants to be, and he want to build a destiny, a destiny. He got three children, three boys. Forget about women. There were so many women killed in, in Brazil that I've never had. More than 4,000, and I don't know, women who were killed in Brazil just because to be a woman. We lost everything when this guy went power. So, you know. We are here to tell you what's happening. We have a bottom up. We are here. We are not, you know, we, we know what's go going to be. And we ask you for international, international solidarity.
because that's what we need. Thank you. Thanks very much for that, Sylvana. That was very rousing. <laughs> we need more of it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> I was getting quite worked up then. <laughs> Uh, right, I just just what the Burns brothers have got the hands up, and then then they will just return to the the other two speakers and see if they just want to make a few closing remarks because we are sort of we've got about twenty minutes to go yet. So, uh, John or Dominic, would you like to go next? It's Dominic. Just a few points, just on the last covers thing. I think the the first basis is if you like solidarity is given without condition is not the position we take up. We. It's automatic solidarity as far as we're concerned with workers in struggle or who are trying to defend their rights and all the rest of it. But you don't do it blindly. You've got to say, look, this isn't the first time this has happened. It's happened before. Let's look at the lessons of it. And I think the lessons are that you can't play about with capitalism at the same time as you're trying to boost workers' uh, strength and solidarity and conditions because the basis of capitalism <coughs> is the exploitation of the working class you can't build a decent health service decent housing decent wages decent conditions when the capitalists are demanding cuts in all of those things to protect their own profits so i think that's that's the sort of view that we've got as far as i see it when it comes to militias you're not talking about organizing men with guns to do what the hell they like or women with guns to do what the hell you like you're talking about workers defense forces because the attacks are going to come from the right working class isn't going to build a militia to go out and attack if you like the capitalist it's going to have to build a militia to defend itself and the organizations that we'd be looking to do that with is the trade unions the organized workers to get them organized on a democratic basis. We talk about democracy. Democracy is grand for the capitalists when their position isn't challenged. But as soon as their position becomes challenged, democracy can go out the door. And surely Latin America has seen that enough over the last, over my lifetime anyway, to realize that the capitalists don't sit tight for, for democracy. You've only got to look at Allende. Allende died with, his gun, with a gun in his hand. The problem with Allende is he didn't organise the workers to have guns in their hands when the coup happened. I think they, these are points that are quite simplistic in a sense, but you've got to look at that's the developments that take place and how you organise, not to just sit back and take it, but how to organise to defeat it. And the only solution facing the working class, as I see it in this era, era is the is it, dismantlement of the capitalist system and replacing it with a democratic worker system wherever you look climate change deforestation all that sort of stuff pollution as far as the air we breathe and as far as it goes we had in britain a few weeks back a tory government that put forward a handout on an annual basis of 45 <coughs> billion a year to the capitalist class no explanation where the money was going to come from. That was going to come from the fairies or other capitalists who were going to give it them. Where it was going to come, as far as they were concerned, was off the backs of the working class. And that's the era we're in. At the same time, as, as, as they had in this country, a 40 to 50 billion deficit in the budget. They couldn't give a damn about the working class. They only think of themselves. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Right, thanks very much, Dominic. Some very good closing words to the discussion. Um, if there's nothing else, so Fabio and Julia, do you want to take about five minutes each to make some closing remarks, both of you? Yeah? You're saying yes, Fabio. Do you mind uh, if I go first? Because yes, I, not I have all. to you leave. Yeah, <laughs> um, thanks, I, don't, I don't really have much more to say. I just want to say that uh, I, you know, whether the PT is a true reflection of an organized working class or not. You cannot, um, in my opinion, move forward unless you have an organized working class. And I don't believe that Brazil at the moment has uh, a working class that is much more organized 
to 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 have a different situation than than we do at the moment. Really, I mean, if we want to move forward, we need to be organising a lot more. I don't think anything else uh, is going to move us forward, and I don't believe that the working class in Brazil is organised sufficiently to take on the system as it is, and it is a very conservative society, as as we've seen in the past few years. Okay, thanks very much, Julia. Shall we return to you now, Fabio? Do you want to make some closing remarks? Um, I want you to say two, just two things more. Um, Jimmy raised this question of whether the, the, the Workers' Party have the necessary roots inside the working class to, to carry out some kind of positive change. Look, the, the polls here in Brazil say that 30% of the Brazilians have as their um, uh, more sympathetic party, the Workers' Party. So the Workers' Party is, is still a mass party. And the, in terms of labor movement, uh, yes, the, the Workers' Party has, uh, the, the CUT is the largest labor federation. It leads the, the, the larger unions in the country. So the Workers' Party, they have in roots inside the working class. The problem is that their politics is not to, uh, uh, to take advantage of this position inside the working class to bring about any kind of socialist change. That's the problem. The politics of the Workers' Party is that they, they believe that it's not possible to change through the action of the working class. What's possible to change is an alliance with the bourgeois sectors. And that's what Lula is working on now, you see. Uh, he does not believe that it's not a problem that the working class is too weak. The problem is that it's not the politics of, of Lula or the Workers' Party to do it. It's like the Labour Party in Britain, you see. I think the, the Labour Party has a lot of new roots inside the working class, but their politics is not to bring about change, but to save capitalism. Or the same in the US, the Democrats is a, is a bourgeois party, you see that tries to associate themselves with uh, some, some people's struggles, but their work is to save capitalists, not to change capitalism. And so that, that's the problem we have here. Regarding what happened to, to Dilma, uh, I think it's, uh, it's horrible to dehumanize uh, Dilma. She was the, the first woman that presides Brazil. Um, uh, but we have to understand what, what happened during all these years that workers' party, they, 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 they ruled the country, you see. When Lula, the first two terms, I mean, eight years Lula was in power, essentially Brazil benefited from the, 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 ex, the exports of commodities, you see. And, and Lula was helped this. For instance, he legalized this, um, Goodness me, the words in English, not always I remember them. When you poison, you put something in the land to make it more fertile. I don't remember the name of this. F fertilizer. Fertilizer. And, but it's not the fertilizer. It's something else. It's the seeds that are genetically modified. Um, it was illegal in Brazil. Lula legalized it then because agribusiness demanded that. You see? Do, and do so, you, for instance, you, soybean... Yeah, Mike covers it. Yes, oh, that's it. Yes. Genetically modified uh, seeds. Yes, that's it. He legalized it. It was not legal before him because he was helping the, the agribusiness sector. Um, uh, during these days of Lula, where the economy is going up, even so, there, he delivered some, poli some policies that were very problematic. For instance, in Brazil, something like 50,000 people are killed every year, 10% by the police. You see, mainly young black people. It's a genocide. And he did nothing. He did not raise one finger 
to stop it. Nothing. So during all his term, the number of people being killed in Brazil was the same. I mentioned here before the mass incarceration that he is responsible because he put out a law on drugs that criminalize these poor young black people that are now there are 600,000 people in jail in Brazil. Majority of them, these people, you see, these poor people. Uh, and when Dilma came, uh, what happens that after 2015, the Brazilian economy went into crisis. There was an a important economic crisis in Brazil. And so uh, there was no space for any reformist policy. Uh, inflation was 10% and employment was increasing. And so there was a kind of divorce from the, uh, of, uh, the working class with Dilma. The support, the people's support for Dilma went below 10%. And so this gave the basis for the, for the bourgeoisie to impeach her in the, in the, national, in the parliament. But um, what I, I want to tell when I am explaining this is that, uh, look, we have similar situations in many parts of the world. Uh, because the, the bourgeois politics is like this. You have a more right-wing party and you have a more social-oriented bourgeois party or reformist party. Both of them play in the same direction to save capitalism, you see. So we need to build something else. Okay, it may be small. Yes, it may be small, but we must start. If we don't start, it will be small forever. You see, we will have capitalism forever and capitalism is in decay. So if we don't uh, work to build a kind of revolutionary organization that fights for the independence of the working class from the bourgeoisie, that stands for workers' power, uh, there is no perspective for, for the working people and the poor. Uh, so that's the point I want you to raise with you. The second issue briefly is that despite of any differences that we may have, you see if it's correct or not to make alliance with the bourgeoisie or not, if PT is a kind of, of positive uh, uh, rule for the working class or not, I think that we can build something of international solidarity around fighting back the far right, because this is very true. Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro groups is a big problem here. It's a big problem. And I don't think that the national government, the new administration will carry out the necessary measures to crush them. They will not because the bourgeoisie don't want to crush them. So it will be for us, you see, we will be under attack, we will have to to answer to these attacks. And so uh, this uh, manifesto that uh, Martin Half bring here, I got it, I read it yesterday as well. I think it's a, a, an interesting step, you see, to put together everyone independently if we agree with Lula or you don't agree. But if you disagree with Bolsonaro uh, and you are in favor of defending the working class, I think it's something that is positive that can unite us. And we follow the experience. We see how, what Lula will do, how the working class will react. And we keep this, the debate open, but now, fight back Bolsonaro, you see, and his gangs and his groups and his far-right militias. So that's it. And um, we really need you. Huh? <laughs> we need international solidarity. And I'm sure that the Brazilian working class will be in place also to deliver international solidarity for all struggles that are happening across the world. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much for coming, guess, Fabio. Yeah. That was fantastic. <laughs> I'm just wondering whether Fabio can write something up to, to send to all of us. I mean, you have people from was, different countries. I was just about to raise that in a minute, just after we close the meeting. Great. But yes, a very good idea. Great minds <laughs> think alike. <laughs> so thanks very much for that. Um, I'm just going to bring, that's the end of the discussion really for this. I'm just going to bring David Hemson back in. I know he wants to make some closing comments uh, to the debate. Yeah, just, uh, you know, some short remarks. First of all, I want to thank uh, Silvana particularly because 
She's a working class woman and had to put off work uh, to be with us uh, today. And she, uh, she has very long working hours. So, Silvana, you know, a special thanks for you. But also to Fabio for thinking uh, through all the issues that there are in, in uh, perspectives in relation to Brazil and bringing out some of the contradictions which are there in front of us but, uh, and are objective. But then we also have the, what can we say, you know, the politics of the situation to, uh, to follow in this sense that the right wing, the ultra right is waiting for one mistake from Lula to bring out a massive uh, reaction uh, from the f Amazon onwards, you know, to, to try and unseat uh, Lula, who's in a very precarious uh, situation, uh, not as a president, but in Congress. I don't think any legislation at the moment could, could go through without some coalition or other. And we could, you know, make some very definite uh, remarks about that. On the other hand, you know, he, ha he has to rule in some way or other. So in other words, the left, we, left must organize exactly as, as, as we've developed in terms of the organizing mass resistance from below, propelling the union movement forward again so that we get 100% uh, unionization among 100 million workers and building the real authentic roots, you know, of working class political parties, which are at the moment you know, not, not functioning, and to build a particularly a united front, you know, on, and, and, and organize in, in a way in which is really going to bring workers out. Just one last point. You know, uh, we've talked about the economy, but the idea of Brazil's economy generally is just as agricultural production. Could I mention that, you know, Brazil has tried to advance at various times the uh, technical people, workers uh, who have the scientific information and so forth, have, have developed uh, software and an aircraft industry, which is really quite something. And sometimes we should actually learn from the way in which uh, the software developers in, in uh, Brazil have tried to fight against uh, Microsoft and elsewhere to be able to have an independent uh, independence from the, the, you know, the great multinationals, you know, which dominate our lives and our computers. So in other words, there's scientific knowledge. There's a base there for a modern economy, which is not going to depend on uh, the exploitation of nature and of working people. Uh, and we look forward to hearing marvelous reports of progress and working class organization in the next period. So thanks to the speakers particularly. Mm. Thanks very much for that, David. Yeah, well, that's into the discussion. I'd like to thank the speakers for coming, Sue, Silvada, uh, Fabio, and Julie. Made extremely valuable contributions to the meeting. So, big thanks to you, and thanks to everybody that's that's made contributions. Um, just following on from what Julie took the word, word the words out of my mouth, I was about to say actually <laughs> one of the ways we can, uh, you know, we can express our solid international solidarities is to publish articles. And I, th I think if you could possibly produce an article for people to read, Wynn does have a face, does have a, a web page, uh, and does have a Facebook page. We're always looking for material, so not not just Fabio, not just the Brazilian comrades, but other comrades. Please write articles and please share things on on our Facebook page. If you want anything, putting on the web page. If you send it to Roger, he'll I, I run the web page. Roger will pass it to me, and I will put it on the website. So, you know, please, please, please have a mind to that. But, yeah, I, I think, uh, Fabio, if you could possibly put an article together, uh, we'd be very, very, or, you, you, or somebody who could put an article together, we'd be really, really pleased to put that on our, our web page and exp express our solidarity in, in that way. Um, so, um, now, no, normally we have Roger at this stage, but we've no Roger. And although we've got a meeting next week, we've no agreed topic at the moment. So <laughs> it's just to say, uh, you know, we will be here again next week, the same time, four o'clock and sometime in the course of the week, Roger, when he comes back from Sweden, we'll send a notification out in the links and all the rest of it. And I hope you can all come next week. Bye. So, uh, yeah. Thanks very much for attending. Uh, I, I know David has just given his email address to Martin. I was just about to give you my email address. Are you all right to send any links to him, Martin? And then we yeah. can pass them on. Yeah, I won't give you mine as well. Though. Oh, sure. I, I can't yeah. see the... 
email. I think it's in the chat. Can you can you just have a quick look? Oops, oh, sorry, please. clicked on the wrong button. Um, let's just see. Oh mm, no, can't. Dhemson at gmail dot com. If you can make a note of that. So say again. D Hemson, that's D H E M S O N mm -hmm. at gmail.com. If you send it to David, then he'll make sure we circulate them in the correct place. Yeah, I'll send a little test one, then you've got my email as well. Oh, we God, God. All right. <laughs> thanks very much, Martin. No, thanks, Pam. Okay. All right. That's in the meeting. Good afternoon. I hope we'll see you all Hello. next week. And solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>